One of the things you want to think about when creating a layout or designing a layout is what is the source order of your content before it has any layout whatsoever. These new tools let us do a lot more creative, creative kind of layouts without worrying about changing the source order for the layout itself. So what kind of source order should we have? You really want to design that source order first and you want it to work in a situation where there's no CSS at all. Both for like a super skinny layout where there is CSS, but then also there are many situations where there is no CSS. Whether you have a content website or another kind of website, in both situations you want to think about the semantics of your HTML and the order of your HTML and imagine what it's like for users that aren't using CSS. So who is it that doesn't have CSS? You might be tempted to think that's nobody, but actually it's a lot of people and you don't really know how many. It could be a huge percentage of your users. For one, anybody using a screen reader and not looking at the page, simply hearing it only, their experience is going to be driven by the source order and by the experience that they get through the screen reader. There are, of course, a lot of people who can see the page, whether they have limited vision and are using the screen reader because of they have low vision, or whether they have full vision, but they're using the screen reader to help with something like dyslexia or to help them read better. Uh, in both situations, you want to make sure that it, this is going to work. So the visual layout will affect some people who use screen readers and it won't affect others. So you want to think all of that through. There's also a lot of situations where there's, uh, the, the, beyond a screen reader, where the source order matters, like uh, SEO. There's a, there are times when you want to make sure, well, for one, to have good SEO, to have semantic HTML so that the search engines understand what your content is. But also, lots of times you might take a link, or someone, your users take a link, and they post it into Facebook, or they post it into Slack, or they post it into all these other situations where a kind of preview card is created. Sometimes those preview cards are super helpful. A great image, really great content. Sometimes it's all messed up and it doesn't really fit where it is that the person wants to go when they click on the link. So thinking about your source order and your HTML and your semantics can help with that situation. Also, more and more people are using tools like Reader View in Safari or Firefox in order to improve their experience as they use the web. Let me show you what it is that these tools do. So here I am, uh, I earlier today was looking something up about the history of CSS and I ended up on this blog post. Uh, Eric Meyer wrote this back in 2015, so I wanted to see about it. But there's a lot going on on this page. There's a lot of stuff here that's not the article and it's almost kind of hard to find the article among all of this clutter. And for anyone who has a hard time with motion, trying to focus on this while this kind of stuff is going on in the sidebar, some of these ads are really distracting. Sometimes it can make you very nauseous or trigger migraines. Um, a quick way to get out of this is just to click up here in Safari and boom, I'm in this reader view mode. And what you see is the website without any CSS and without any JavaScript. And it's also only displaying the main content. The person who's using Safari then has the power to change the font, to change the size of the font, to change the background, the different ways that it looks. Uh, this can be used easily for people who have disabilities or who have low vision or to really kind of help them. Plenty of people though who don't identify as a person with a disability just have reasons to use the web in a different way and they want to, we kind of all want to have a way to customize it and make it more comfortable for ourselves. Firefox is the same kind of thing. I can go into, I'll oh, see, look, this article, it's just, ugh, right? Uh, we don't want any of this, so let's just get away from the crazy and into uh, another kind of mode where, again, I can sort of customize it to better fit what it is that I want to see. There's another tool here in Firefox where I can listen. C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E-B-L-O-Q.com. Eric Meyer on the past, present, and future of CSS. Seven to eight minutes. Web design. Eric Meyer on the past, present, and future of CSS. To understand the future of CSS, you first need to understand to understand the future of CSS, you first need to understand its past and standards where Eric Meyer has been there right from the start. The year was 1996. I was the year was 1996. I was the webmaster for a university in Cleveland. And you can see here, you can use this tool yourself to get a kind of experience of a, of a screen reader and see whether or not, for example, these here, this link web design and this little short 
sentence, Eric Meyer and the Past Future in, in, of CSS, when you're looking at this vis visually, having the title repeated twice isn't that big of a deal, but when you're listening to it, it's super annoying. So if I were going to maybe clean this up and improve it, I'd just probably take this part right here, maybe the seven to eight minutes, but definitely this little list, and just either get rid of it completely or put it way at the bottom of the page in the source order, and if we wanted to visually show it at the top of the page, we could use CSS Grid to visually bring it back up to the top. But in the source order be at the bottom so that screen readers don't get to it first. They get straight to the content first. So it's not just tools like reader mode that matters. It's also things like Pocket or Instapaper where people are able to grab a copy of the content of the page and save it someplace so they can open it up later in an app. Most of those apps work in such a way that they don't bring over all the CSS and JavaScript, they just bring over the HTML and they display it in a way that's the formatting for that particular app. Uh, also, I have a feeling that one day Cortana or Alexa, Siri or Google Assistant is going to wake up and start reading web pages out loud. It's going to be kind of cool. You can drive your car and have Twitter read web content out loud to you or it'd be a great way to get through a lot of content quickly. But websites have to be prepared for it. So if you're building a project today, why not just get it ready for that kind of eventuality? Why set up your company or your project so that it has to be re-architected in a year or three years or five years, uh, when instead you could just make sure it works with screen readers today?